All right, let's go before the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for your mercy, God. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for your loving kindness. And Father God, we just pray for your spirit, God, just to rest inside of our hearts and our minds during this rough time that everybody's going through. We thank you for this festival, God, that gives us an opportunity to focus on your goodness and your mercy. And we pray blessings upon all those that attend, God. And we pray, Father God, that you would continue to bless and keep us today and every day thereafter. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask all these things. Amen and hallelujah. Good morning Amen. once again, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. Um, for those who don't know, my name is Stephanie Green, and I have been with the Inspired Faith Film Festival for at least three or four years now. And so um, I've had the opportunity of meeting these wonderful people and making them part of my family, my film family. So I'm so grateful to be here today. And so we're just going to, it's going to be really informal, um, play a couple of games, get to know each other a little bit better and uh, we could take it from there, okay? All right, so the first game I wanted to, well, the first thing I want to do is I want everybody to just introduce themselves. Hey, Shimon. Hey, I want everyone to just uh, introduce hey, themselves. Hey, everybody. Uh, hey, um, Shimon, when you get a chance, if you can go on mute, that'd be great. I want everybody just to introduce themselves. We can just go one at a time. Um, and uh, you know, just unmute as you introduce yourself. We'll start with you, Miss Judith. Even though we all know you, but tell us something about you that we don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure everybody knows me, but um, okay. I am, <laughs> I am Judith Fallon Reed, filmmaker uh, with Bar Vision Films and uh, co-convener of the Inspired Faith Film Festival. Uh, what do you, don't you know about me? I'm a writer. I'm a director, screen director, writer, and. Um, Love God. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Mr. Brown, Mr. Michael Brown, tell us a little bit about yourself, sir. Good morning, good morning, people. Uh, well, I know I, I, all the faces up here I, I, I pretty much know, except for Nate. Welcome, Nate. Um, okay, so something you don't know about me. Wow, I'm not quite sure if I could tackle that task. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> well, 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 for Nate's sake, he needs to know who you are. Okay, I am Michael Brown. The I spearheaded Barvision Films, which then spearheaded a whole bunch of things. Like Barvision is the umbrella, and Inspired Faith, GIF Festival in Jamaica, um, Carib Film Festival in Palm Bay. Um, um, Myself and Judy, we spearhead, we, we, we produce those uh, film festivals. We, um, we also are, we have four movies, four award-winning movies under our belt. Four award-winning, actually five, award, uh, but we have a total of six, six films, Judy. I don't Sorry. know, I lost, I lost track. <laughs> Nate, that's my yeah, husband, that's what you know. <laughs> so, um, you know, um, it's not about me. I, I like to keep a low profile. So, Stephanie, Right back at you. Okay, awesome, awesome. Miss Aretha, tell us a little bit about yourself, dear. Hey, happy Saturday. My name is Aretha Tatum. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Um, fun Ooh. fact is I didn't even start doing films. I'm 53 and Ooh. that's a good year for me. I always have a theme and a theme song for every year. So I didn't start doing films until I was 50. So this is a whole new world. Oh, wow. Uh, that's so me. awesome. Yeah. So I'm excited <laughs> about this new world. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. How's the weather there in Chicago? Is it hot right now? It's beautiful today. It's supposed to get in the 90s, so it's a little hot. Yesterday was 80s and sunny and beautiful. Nice, nice, nice. Well, welcome, Miss Aretha. Thank you. Next, we have Nate Powers. Hi, Nate. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Nate. Uh, I am a filmmaker. Uh, I've been working as a self-employed cinematographer for about four years now. Um, I'm also a worship leader. Um, nice. I sing at a church called Free Chapel um, under the leadership of Jensen Franklin in Gainesville, Georgia. Um, and I've been, this is actually my Death to Life, which is the film that is in this festival, mm -hmm. is my first feature length project, which is nice. exciting. Um, and we're, we're making waves with it. We, we premiered it in Ohio a few months ago and uh, 
that's kind of the location where the film centers around. And we had 500 people from the community come wow. out. Wow. Yeah. Um, nice. Very raised nice. About, raised about six thousand dollars for our distribution into festivals. Oh, so that's it's, so awesome. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. That's wonderful. I love your pastor. I followed him ever since he first started on TVN, and I yeah. love Jensen Franklin. Mm -hmm. Love him. He's great. He's a great love, leader. Love his ministry. Pastor I love his message. I love the way he delivers his message. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He's yeah. an incredible Also man of God. Yeah, wonderful. Well, welcome, Nate. And next we have Shimon Foye. Hey, Shimon, how you doing, my friend? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. How you doing? It's good to see doing you. Doing good. Now, good to see you. You too. So tell us a little bit about yourself. And my name is uh, Shaman Foy, and I'm actually a, a, a screenwriter and a director. And uh, I say producer too because I've been making my own uh, short films and getting them out there on my own. So so that's part of producing also. And I'm mm -hmm. grateful to have the uh, film. My film, The Calling, is in this festival this year. Uh, and last year, my film, Despair, was in a festival, and it was a wonderful festival. And uh, I'm looking forward to see how, how it goes virtually this year. I'm gonna check out some films when I get back home. And I'm from Queens, New York, and I'm grateful to be on this call and to see some familiar faces and people. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're certainly glad to see you as well. I actually did get an opportunity to see The Calling. I thought it's a great film. It's got a great message. I know a lot of people will be encouraged by it. So thank you for coming. And last but certainly not least, we have Pastor Faye on the on the line. How you doing, Pastor, this morning? I am doing good. I am doing good. I am doing good. For those who do not know me, that's what I look like, at least at this hour in the morning. I was wondering. Hi, Aretha. Hi, Aretha. Shaman, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. And Nate, welcome to the family. I am part of the Barry Vision, Barry Vision Inspired Faith yes. Film Festival team and all the other festivals that they do. Yeah, um, I'm a pastor. Good morning, John. Good to see you. Good morning. Sorry, I'm late. Um, I the email, I'm a judge but... in the festival, and um, I guess you can add actress to my resume. I've actually been in a couple of the films, so. I'm excited to see what through motion picture and very happy to be amongst folk who are constantly being inspired, constantly looking for a new story to tell and a new way to tell that story. I'm happy to be yeah. here. Bless you. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us today, Pastor Faye. And we have John Moeller. Hi, John. How are you doing this morning? Great. Yeah, doing well. Thanks for having me. Good, good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm a Boston College student. I'll be a senior next year. Uh, I made a short documentary for the festival. Um, I'm excited to hear from you all. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're so glad that you can join us this morning. Wonderful. Well, I'm glad to see everybody's online this morning. And we're going to do just a couple of networking games, kind of fun. Um, the first game we're going to play is is words in words. I know that sounds kind of funny, but it's words in words. So does everyone have a piece of paper and a pen? I'm sorry, I'm a teacher at heart, so does everyone have a piece of paper and a pen? Awesome. Or your phone, you can use your phone. That's fine, that's fine. I know you're driving, Shaman, so you're going to have to mentally do it. <laughs> do it again. Yeah, keep your hands on the wheel. Yeah, my wife's yeah, driving, so go. it's a little easier for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is going to be a uh, individual exercise. Everybody has one minute to do this, okay? And I'm going to give you a word and I'm going to need you to make other words out of that word. And the person who has the most words within a minute wins, okay? So the word that you have to use to make other words is filmmaker. So go ahead and write filmmaker down or get that in your mind, Shimon filmmaker, okay? Everybody written it down? I'm going to start my timer here just so everybody sees I got a timer here. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna start it and go. All right, we're at 59.51 seconds. I should play some Jeopardy music. Ding, do, 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 do,
50 seconds. All right, what happened? Let's see here. All right, and stop. Okay. Is that pencils We're down? We're going to start with Miss Judith. That pencils down, everyone. <laughs> okay, so I've it. got film, make, uh -huh. maker, if, uh -huh. am, ma, mark, flake, flam, flame, kim, rake. Okay, so you got, how many words you, was that? 17? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13. 13 words. All right, you got 13 words. Woo -woo. All right. Okay, let's go to Michael. How many words did you get, Michael? Hi, Michael Lewis. On, I was talking seven. to Michael Brown. Only seven. <laughs> Only seven. Fame, okay. fake, maker, laker, ma'am, rake, make. Okay. All right, good, good. Ms. Aretha, how many words did you get? Uh, see, like, it's morning, and my brain don't come on yet, but I did get six, film, make, bar, rake, mail, and Kim. <laughs> All right, good. good. What about you, Nate? How many did you get? I only got uh, eight. I got film, make, maker, rake, lake, far, and male. Okay. All right, good. Shimon, mentally in your head. I, I actually didn't get anything. The only thing that came to my mind was inspired, but I'm not sure if, uh, if that really applies. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll get on the next activity. The next one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. What about you, John? How many did you get? Uh, I only got the easy ones plus a few more. So I got, uh, I got make, maker, film, firm, mayor, Ram, Mame, and Reem. Okay. All, All right, awesome. Hey, Michael, thanks for joining us. We're actually doing a game called Words and Words, so you'll get on the next go round, okay? We're making words out of other words. Can, can so, we have Michael introduce himself? Yeah, Mr. Lewis, can you hear me? Can you introduce yourself to the group? I think he's on mute. You're on mute. He's on mute. Yeah, he's on mute. Uh, hello? Hey, how are you? How you doing, Michael? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Good. You can good. Hear me, right? yeah, we can hear you. Welcome to okay. the Inspired Faith Film Festival Networking Breakfast. Tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I am a um, VIP filmmaker, but also I shoot a lot of music videos and um, events. And um, nice. I love God. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm from wonderful, a wonderful. Yep. He was breaking up a little bit. You're from where, dear? I'm from Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, ATL, ATL yeah. in the house. I love Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Well, welcome to the festival. Uh, okay, so you guys ready for your next word? Your next word is going to be broadcast. Broadcast. And so, Michael, you just have to figure out how many words you can make out of the word broadcast okay i'm gonna give you guys a minute ready and go Can we can we break the words up and and like you know totally break them up or it has to stay like broad and cast or things no, like that? Break them up. You can make any type okay. of words. So so I would need a pencil and paper, which I don't yeah, have. Yeah, you now. would. You'll get on the <laughs> so you'll get on, on the next. Yeah, the next activity okay. you'll get on. You won't. Okay. Shaman, use your phone. Pencil for that one. And I messed the instructions up last time. So yeah, Shaman. There's no way you can get that. Yep. Use your phone. I'm doing well, actually, it in my notes. He's on yeah, the but phone. Actually, 
Oh, you're on I'm the using phone. The, yeah, I'm using the Waze app to find directions where we're mm-hmm. driving, and then I'm using the Zoom app to talk to you, so I don't want to burn the phone <laughs> up. <laughs> they have too many things open. <laughs> But I'm just grateful to be on the call. So I'll, I'll get in on the next one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I got you on the change, next Judith, one. For the suggestion. Next one for sure. Okay, everybody, pencils down. Pencils down. All right, we're gonna start on the bottom this time. Michael Lewis, how many words did you get? Hold on. I got, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got nine words. Nine. Okay, what were the words? Tell us what the words were. I got act, as, broad, cast, red, toad, road, bro, and coast. Okay, good job, good job. Hey, by the way, Judith, you won that last round. (laughs) All right, go ahead, John. How many words did you get? Oh, you're on mute, dear. John's muted. Got it. Thank you so much. (laughs) Happens to be too often. Uh, cast, <laughs> You're fine. broad, road, toad, cat, cats, bad, bat, bads. Um, actually, is bads a word? I don't know. Uh, sat, roast, <laughs> bats, dots, and dot. So, well, How many was that? I lost count. 10, 11, 12, 13, excluding the one bads. <laughs> All right, good job. So far, John's in the lead. John's in the lead. Nate, how many did you get? I got nine. Okay. I got cast, broad, the easy ones, obviously. Uh, yeah. Bad, cat, tack, tab, sad, boast, and road. Okay, good, good. Uh, Miss Aretha, how many did you get? Uh, eight, the number of new beginnings. <laughs> cast, All broad, right. uh, tag, road, coat, dark, art, car. Yeah, that's my eight. Okay, nice, nice. Okay, Michael, how many did you get? Michael on top. Michael B. I can't get get past seven. Cast, okay. broad, coast, roast, boast, road, bad. One, two, three, four, five. Six. And that's all I came up with. You okay. see, I, I, I have to say that the teacher didn't give me enough time, you know, so can I tell you? <laughs> oh, you only get one minute, sir, one minute. All right, Miss Judith, how many did you get? You're on mute, darling. In my defense, I spent half my time trying to help Shaman, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's my defense. So I only got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and they all include the ones everybody else has. Okay, well, John is the winner. <laughs> all right, now we're going to play a game that Shaman can play. And since he hasn't been able to get into the last two rounds, we're going to let him start this round off. We're going to play a game that's called Fame for two minutes okay and Shimon I want everybody to get a question we're gonna make Shimon famous for two minutes okay so I want everyone to get a question yeah we're gonna make Shimon famous for two minutes okay okay so what we'll need is we'll need everyone to get a question and this is a celebrity Shimon is a celebrity so I want you to ask him a question that you would ask a celebrity and let's see what his answers is because he's famous for two minutes. So everybody write down a question you want to ask Shimon. And Shimon, we need you to answer the questions for us, okay? Okay. So these are, these are you want like real answers or something or just make up what I would make up or? No, we want you to give us real Okay, all right, all right. This is another way that we can get to know you a little bit better. Yeah. Okay, I get it. And you can ask any question you want, as long as it's rated G. You can ask any question you want. Like, do you eat peanut butter and jelly? You know. I got it. (laughs) Do you have any dogs, any cats? You know, whatever you want to ask them. All right. You guys ready with your questions? All right. We're going to start with Miss Aretha first. Miss Aretha, what's your question for Shimon. Okay, Mr. Shimon, it's glad to talk to you. You inspire so many people with your films. What is your go-to film when you need to be inspired? Ooh, good question. I don't really have a go-to uh, film that I go to, but I will say uh, it's a secular film, my favorite film in the world. 
uh, is Back to the Future, you know. So I just, you know, I just love everything about the film. It's a perfect film to me, uh, but I don't necessarily go to it for for inspiration. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question. I mean, I go to YouTube and nice, I watch inspi- I watch inspiring like videos and things like that. Uh, but that's uh, yeah, that's my okay. Answer. <laughs> so if there was an actor to play you in your life story, who would you pick? Ooh, good well, question. Because I'm tall and because I'm like a little bit brown skin, I would say probably Will Smith. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. Thank you, Ms. Aretha. Good questions. Good questions. All right. Nate, what are your two questions for Shimon? Um, The first I had was, who's your favorite filmmaker? My favorite filmmaker is, uh, but it's hard to pick one. Uh, I always say M. Night Shyamalan, Spike Spike Lee, and uh, those are my favorite two, I would say. Yeah, Yeah. it's hard to pick one. uh, what is your favorite project you've done and what was it about? Well, my favorite project is the, I would have to say the calling because uh, it has inspired a lot of people and uh, what, it, what it's about is a pastor that uh, was called to preach and he's struggling uh, and not making money and he's, he's uh, questioning his call and a lot of pastors go through that, especially nowadays. You know, the tithes are not coming in, membership is low, church, you know, membership is waning, and, and we just see how God works the whole situation out uh, for him. So that that is my favorite film. Uh, I know I'm cheating by giving two answers to these questions, but my, my second, <laughs> one of my other favorite films is a, a film that I just made during the quarantine with my wife and my son, and it's called No Excuse. And uh, it's a one minute uh, short film uh, that uh, talks about racial injustice and police brutality. And uh, it's a mother that is uh, trying to explain to her son how he has to act in, in the society, you know, that we live in because the unfortunate way that blacks are just, you know, treated differently and, and you know, how we're uh, victims of a lot of police brutality and things like that. So that film touches my heart because, you know, my cousin got shot five times by the police and, you know, I've had incidents oh, wow. with the police and a lot of other things. So, so that really touches my heart. And all of my films are, and are usually uh, Christian or they're social. So that's enough. Uh, I don't want to keep rambling, but that's my answer. Thank you uh, for the questions. Awesome. Good, good, good. All right, John, what are your two questions for Shimon? Absolutely. So the first one is, can I take a selfie? That's the first thing I'd ask a celebrity for sure. Um, but see how that works <laughs> out today. Um, the next one would be, uh, what inspires you to be where you are today? Well, what inspires me is that uh, I just really God's been working uh, faith in my in my uh, life, you know, uh, especially recently, and that's even what the calling is about. So, just having faith that He will uh, that He will be there for me and He has a plan for me uh, is one thing that I just uh, that that helps inspire me. Just knowing that God has my back, He's there for me, He'll never leave me, never forsake me. So, that is uh, you know that is one thing that keeps me going to faith. That awesome. God has planned for me. Wonderful. Ms. Judith, what are your questions Thank for Mr. Shimon? So my two questions are, if you could make any true story into a film, what true story would you choose? I, I'm usually a very open person, but I can't share that. God put it on my heart to make a film about somebody that's famous. I've shared it with a few people, but I'm not ready to share right now. Yeah. So. I've read the autobiographies. I mean, I've read the books and I'm, I've been doing a lot of research and, and I don't even know how I'm going to do it because it's a one of the most influential people in history, but I'm, I'm going to do it and I'm working on it right now and I can't share it right now. Okay. I'm, I, I, you know, so yeah, so it's, it's a famous a, it's a person. It's a story about a person. It's a famous about awesome. a famous person. Yeah. So, so as soon as I can share it, more details in the script, hopefully I can find a team to help me do this too. Uh, I'm hey, excited. right here, right here. I yeah, volunteer. Yeah. I want to be a part. Got some folks right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll reach out to you guys. Your next question, Judith? And my next question is, if you could change one thing in your life, just one thing, what would it be? Good question. Oh, boy, that's a tough thing. If I could change one thing. I really don't want to change anything because even though I've been through ups and downs like everybody in life, it got me to where I am today. So I'm just grateful for... Uh, 
you know, all the things that, I, that I've been through and I, I wouldn't change anything. Wonderful, oh, wonderful, good answer. Mr. Michael Brown, what are your questions for Mr. Shimon? Okay, you're, you're heading to the set to, to, for filming. What's one of the first things that goes through your mind? Good question. Well, I, I'm always concerned are people gonna show up that I made about six short films and, and that's never happened. But I'm always concerned, are people gonna show up? You know, are the people gonna be ready? Uh, that's that's my biggest, are they gonna show? That's my biggest concern usually when I go to make a film. Now that you're here on the red carpet, what are your thoughts? I'm grateful for all uh, for, the, for this opportunity and for uh, all of the people that are that are uh, here to share this with me and watch the film. That's, that's what I would say. Okay. Good question. Good answer. Mr. Michael Lewis, what are your questions for Mr. Shimon? <laughs> um, how did you get into filming? Wow. Wow. So uh, what happened is really um, years ago, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, older than I look. I'm actually 43. Uh, so years ago, I went into a store and I got a camcorder. Uh, and uh, after I got a camcorder, I got some equipment and, and started just filming like birthday parties and stuff had a business for like five years and then I stopped for seven years. Uh, and uh, I always wanted to make a, make films, but I was just a videographer. So what happened is I was at my job and uh, I, I had a special role where I represented the people of the job and I felt frustrated. Like I couldn't get the things done that I wanted to. Uh, and then also in society, I was very frustrated. So I felt like I didn't have a voice and then God put it on my heart to just start writing it down. So I just started writing some, some scripts this was like only two years ago too. Everything happened so rapidly. And then I've been writing scripts ever since. And I made like six, seven short films and I have other aspirations. Uh, so that's it. I really didn't feel like I had a voice and it all sparked from there. Okay. Awesome. Um, I guess my second question is, what's the most interesting place that you ever been to? <laughs> the, the most interesting place I ever been to was Israel because it's just, it's just, it's just a different climate. It's a different language. It's a different continent. And it was, and it was no matter if you're Christian, Muslim or, or Jewish, all three of the faiths come together there. And, you know, to say that's the garden of Gethsemane, you know, and this is uh, uh, Jerusalem. And I was in the old city and I went to Nazareth where Jesus was born. And I went to the, uh, you know, every, it was just a magical place that I recommend everybody should go. And it was my Good nice. place. One of my favorite places. Nice, nice, nice. Well, thank you, Mr. Shimon. Thank you so much for giving us your time, sir. We appreciate you. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. And I actually got to get off because we're running. Uh, we can't find the directions because I'm busy chatting. <laughs> so okay, well, we got perfect time in this. Yeah, but I'll see you guys All right, well, blessings to morning. you and your yep. family. Nice and hopefully you. somebody can, you know, we can all stay in touch. And my handle is Foy Vision, F O Y E V I S O N, Foy Vision, and on all social media Foy and Foy and FoyVision.com. And I look forward to getting with some of you guys, you know, uh, especially the cinematographer and some of the other people, uh, you know. And and uh, thanks and talk talk to you guys, see you guys throughout the Thank weekend. Thank you, Sean. All right, take care. We appreciate you, bro. We'll appreciate talk soon. Too. All right, take care. Bye bye. All right, uh, take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. So now we have another celebrity in the building, everyone. She's coming down the red carpet, Miss Judith Fallon Reed. Woo! All right, you guys, get your questions together. And I'm going to do a little bit of interviewing while you guys get your questions together. So, Miss Reed, tell us what you're wearing today. I'm wearing <laughs> Old Navy. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> I'm wearing Old Navy Summer Collection. With, nice, um, one of my favorite with accessories handmade <laughs> from the bark of a banyan tree in Jamaica by this what amazing tree? artist. A banyan tree is this massive tree with this bark that sheds pieces. And so she takes oh. the bark and she paints uh -huh. them and she makes them into these amazing pieces of jewelry. So, yes. That is really, really nice. I love stuff like that. Very pretty, very pretty. So while they're getting their questions together, let me ask you a question, Ms. Judith. So you are <clears throat> part of this wonderful uh, festival that you've been doing for five years. Did you ever think when you started that it would grow into what it is today? I actually didn't. 
when we started, we thought, you know, we had been to a couple of festivals and we realized that there weren't enough Christian festivals, just not enough of them. And uh, we wanted to do a festival that would be a faith festival, an inspirational family and inspirational festival. And so we, we approached a friend of ours who has a church and we said, hey, can we use your space? And the first year we were just shocked at the level of involvement we got. People flew from all over the place. This was year one to come and be there. And um, we thought, okay, let's see if we can replicate that. And we did. It was, it, no, we didn't expect it to turn into something so large. Wow, awesome. Well, you're doing a great job and I'm so Thanks. excited to be a part of it. Uh, Mr. Lewis, what are your questions for Ms. Judith? Um, so uh, my question would be, um, what inspired you to, to help like filmmakers and people of film? As filmmakers ourselves, uh, we realize the difficulty of getting into festivals and getting your films out there. Well, we're Jamaicans yeah. and our films are pretty much mostly based in Jamaica, which makes it even harder because we're seen as international films. And so, uh, as I'm sure you know, and other filmmakers on here know, and those who will be watching know, it's really difficult. You have tons of festivals. They get hundreds of submissions. So it's never, it's not yeah. necessarily an indictment on your product. And so right. we thought, let's try and do a festival that is about more than just the quality of the film in terms of the technical quality of the film, but it's more about the content of the film. Yeah. And so there are films that we take in the festival where the technical aspect isn't perfect, isn't great, but the content is so amazing. So that was our inspiration, was to be able to give a fairly level playing field to even amateurs. Okay. Um, and then um, my, my second thing, my question is, because, um, so I do have a friend here in Jamaica, and I always want to go to Jamaica, right? Come on down. <laughs> and so I was trying to figure out what's the best jerk restaurant. <laughs> jerk <chicken. laughs> okay, that's easy, actually. That's easy. None of them. None of them. If you want real jerk chicken and real jerk pork, you have to go to the little man on the side of the road, or you have to go to Portland. There's an area in Jamaica called Portland, and an okay. area in Portland called Boston. And Boston. that's the original spot. So all those restaurants, all those places, they, they offer what we call tourist jerk. It's done for the <laughs> palate of the tour. Or they do some weird stuff with it and variations, and it's, it's like fusion <laughs> jerk. You want real jerk? The man with the pan on the side of the road? Now, I'm not telling you it's the most sanitary place to be, but the man with the pan on the side of the road. And Boston in Portland is where you get real jerk. Yeah. And you have to wash it down with several drinks because it's going to be hot. So hot. Wow. I right, love it. Okay. I love it. <laughs> Nate, what are your questions for Miss Judith? Um, what's something that... <laughs> What is something that happened in your life that would make a good movie? Oh, wow. Ooh, my mom, the story of my mom and my stepdad. Mm -hmm. An mm -hmm. ultimate love story. I'm also an author, and I've actually started writing the book about them. He nice. was Jewish. They're both deceased now. He was Jewish. She's Chinese Jamaican. And they met when she came to look after his mom. Mm. Wow. That does sound um, like a great story. It's just such a story. love story I of 30-odd 30, 30 years of absolute love and wow. um, him seeing her through her dementia and Alzheimer's and there to the very, 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 very end. That's what I would make the movie of. I love that. Beautiful. Um, what is your favorite part of the, the process of filmmaking? Um, <laughs> okay, so on the set, they call me the director from hell because I, I don't, you know, I, I don't play on my set. Everybody knows we don't, we don't play on the set. We play before we start filming. We play after we start filming. But once we're filming, it's serious. I have to say my best part is directing because I'm also a writer and I also produce. But my best part is directing and being able to take people to the place they need to go to be able to bring out the emotion that they need to bring out. 
So I would have to say working with the actors and the actresses to be able to bring that together as a director. Very good. Good questions, Nate. John, what are your questions for Miss Judith? Yeah, um, so my first one might be, um, what's one of the most inspiring stories you've heard from a film? From a film? Yeah. Ooh, that, that one's actually easy. Now, if I could only remember the name of the film. So the very, <laughs> the very, very first year we did this festival, we had a film which was about some children who were um, being held by a gunman in a classroom, which is a real story. I remember that, that film. I remember oh, that. Oh my goodness. And they were led out by angels because nobody could find these yeah, people who led that. them out afterwards. And just how they escaped that situation. And I am so sorry that I'm older than the rest of you on here, except for Michael. And so I can't remember right off the top of my head. But before I'm this is over, I'm going to tell too. you the thing. I remember the film. And the most inspiring one. What? I remember the film. I, I can't come up with the name. I'll come up with the name before it's over. Go ahead. Next one. <laughs> Good. Miss Aretha, what are your questions? Were they, no, John I didn't give me a second question. Oh, John, you got one more question? I'm sorry. Go ahead, yeah. John. No problem. Uh, that was a great answer to a tough question, I think. That was a good one. Yeah. Um, so what's your favorite genre of film? I'll give you a... Comedies. I love comedies. Me too. Clean, guys... clean, fun, family-friendly comedies. Because yes. I think life is serious enough. There's enough murder and mayhem going on in life. There's enough of all of that. I get that every day. So I love being able to just sit down and get a good laugh with a good clean comedy that actually has funny lines. Because a lot of especially what we now, call comedy today was comedy. not made to laugh. Pardon, John? Oh, I said especially now, I think it's a great time for, you know, yes. some, you know, comedy. Yeah, people need, yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, thank you, John. Ms. Aretha, what are your questions for Judith? I would love to know, since you are also a poet, what inspires you to write your poetry? I, most of my poetry is written from just totally different things that happen around me. I, I write a lot of social commentary, um, the things that are happening every day, poetry based on that. And a lot of my poetry actually starts with just maybe a Facebook post. I just, I wanted to rant or I wanted to just get two words out. And before I knew it, it was a full, you know, six, seven stands of poem. But it's all, most of my poetry, I would have to say all of it has to do with my experiences, has to do with something personal or something that I've seen or some social injustice. That has been. Okay, and my second question, if you had the opportunity to get a role of a lifetime as an actress, what type of role would it be? I would have to say, <laughs> um, <laughs> it would be, Ooh. It would have to be a transformational role. It would have to be a role where I, because my whole life has been about transformation right. and, and helping people to transform. And so it would have to be some kind of role where I start out in a bad position and realistically <laughs> right. are, are right. able to transform and have my life transformed into something good that helps people. Nice. And, nice. up, and opposite Denzel Washington. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Good question. Thank you, Miss Judith. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. All right, let's go. Let's let's go to Mr. Uh, Nate Powers. Nate is going to be our celebrity now. All right. Yay, Nate. Okay, so I'm going to start start off my first question to you, Nate. Nate, um, I know that you're a filmmaker. I know you've been making films for a long time. What was one of the most challenging issues you've ever had on the set and how did you overcome it? Um, okay, so in 2012, I took on, actually 2011, I took on my first like short film with a full crew. It was my first like professional production and I was a student mm -hmm. at the time. Um, I was in my senior class and our big assignment for the class was to do this fully professional film. And I wrote a very ambitious script um, that involved uh, things like a robbery taking place in a thrift store. Um, we had a scene that was taking place in jail or prison. 
Um, and my professor told me, this is too ambitious. You can't do this. Um, mm -hmm. And I am very much the personality of like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get done what I want. Right. Um, and if I have a vision, I'm just going to figure it out. And so I kept telling my professor, I, I think I can figure it out. I think I can make it happen. He basically told me if I went through with the script the way that it was, that he would dock me points. And oh, so wow. I decided not to listen. Um, and we ended up in like a two and a half month pre-production. I ended up securing uh, a store to do all of the robbery scenes with police on set to make sure everything was safe. We got permission to shoot in a uh, federal prison in South Carolina. Really? Um, wow. Yeah, it was it was like way out of my wheelhouse, but it was literally just me reaching out to connections and people who had connections and kind of wooing them in a way. And it was it was a huge challenge, and it was also a learning experience for building relationships and mm -hmm. and getting people to trust me. Right. <laughs> Um, and I ended up, my <laughs> awesome. project ended up getting docked a full letter grade because I didn't listen to him, even though I was successful in what I wanted to do. So that was the downside. But the upside was that the film ended up winning a film festival in New York City um, that was sponsored by G Technology, which is like a hard drive company. Um, and mm -hmm. they ended up sponsoring me for two years out of that. And I got like free hard drives for like two years. So it was a, it was a really good, a good experience. Amazing. Amazing. Awesome. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Ms. Judith, what are your questions for Nate? <clears throat> well, my questions for Nate are the same two questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, this is how I buy Christmas gifts. I pick a store and I just buy all the stuff in there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, if you could, I'm pretty impressed, by the way, by your answer. Well, like super impressed. Thank you. Super impressed. If you could make any true story, any story from your life, anybody's life that you've heard into a film, what would it be? Mm. So it would be something that actually happened last year. Um, to give a little bit of context, I have an uncle who was killed in Vietnam. Um, and my grandparents in memoriam for him funded the planting of a church in Honduras. And this was 50 years ago. And since then, wow. no one in my family has seen it or even known if it still exists. Right. Um, and last year, I, I do a lot of client work. And last year, I had an opportunity to work with a nonprofit who does missions work in Roatan, Honduras. And so I was just like, I'm gonna go do this job. And while I'm there, I'm just gonna talk to everybody I can about this story of my grandparents planting this church and always wondering if it was still around. And uh, we were there for a week and a half and about five days into the trip, I was telling the story to somebody for like the hundredth time and told them what island the church had been planted on. It was a very small, remote island, no electricity or anything. And she was like, I know that church. And she was like, it's still there. It's, it's still there. And so she, she arranged for a boat to pick us up the next day to take us to the island. It's the only way you can get there. And we found the church, and it literally has the, like, date, into the sidewalk of when my grandparents had sent the money to fund the building and come to find out in the 70s about five years after the plant the church was planted there was a revival on the island and so the pastor of the church now was a kid when the church was planted and was there when it was like the first revival on this island when people all over the island got saved and wow it's just this legacy that I got to experience firsthand that nobody in my family had gotten to see for the last 50 years. And it was just, it was crazy. So I think that would be, that would be a. And my second question is, if you could get one piece of equipment that you don't have, what would it be? 
Ooh. Um, I don't know. Uh, probably, probably just a way better camera than something I have. Okay. Uh oh. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Okay. Sorry, I don't. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I rent a lot of times. I rent equipment, so I, I, it's hard for me to say what I would want because I. I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> that was a really bad answer. That's fine. But no, hey. Cameras. We all, we all want better cameras. <laughs> yes. I know about, I know about yeah. hard drives. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have an update? Sure. <laughs> I have an update. Good. All right, Michael Brown, what are your questions for Nate Wait. Powers? Good. Um, yeah? Just stepping back to something, Judith, uh, referring about the movie. The movie is called The Cokeville Miracle. Thank you. Oh, that's what it was called. Yes, that's what it was called. If you ever get a chance to see The Cokeville Miracle, look it up, find it, watch it. I guarantee, I did not movie. cry at movies. That one's gonna bring tears to your eyes. And it's just, it's an amazing, amazing movie. Amazing story. Very good, yeah. I, I'll, I'll forego my questions for Julie because I know, already know all the answers. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right. great, great. All right, well, we're gonna do, um, we're gonna move right along. We're gonna go into another quick game and then we're gonna ask a couple quick questions. Um, this game is called a mind meld, mind meld, the melding of the minds, the melding of the minds. And for this game, we're going to need two people. So I'm going to choose Miss Aretha and John Moeller. You two, your minds are going to be melded together. Okay. So <laughs> the way we play this game is I'm going to say a word like I'm going to say snowstorm. You guys have three seconds and you're going to say the first thing that comes to your mind pertaining to a snowstorm. Now, the, 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 the thing is, we want you guys to say the same thing. So hopefully you'll say the same thing. If you say the same thing, you get a point, okay? Okay. If you don't say the same thing, well, we'll have to move on to somebody else to see if we can meld their minds, okay? Okay. Are you ready? All right. So, I can't hear you, John. Yes. So it can't have, like, the word in snowstorm, right? Or... Well, like, if, okay, so if you and I were doing it and I said snowstorm, we count to three, one, two, three, and we'd say snowball fight. So you can use the word. Mm, okay. Okay. In other words, you have to say something that is that goes along with the word that I said. Okay. Yeah. Or if I say, if I say the Fourth of July, you guys will count one, two, three, firecracker. Okay. So say the first thing that comes to your mind. We want to see if you two minds are on the same wavelength. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. We're going to get their minds melded. Okay. So I'm going to say the word and then you guys are going to count to three and say the first thing that comes in your mind. Okay. Hopefully it'll be the same thing. <laughs> Are you ready? Your word is hot dog. Ready? Count. One, One two, two, three, three. fun. Uh, yeah, I was going to say ketchup, but I'm in oh. Chicago. <laughs> Work okay, all right, we're going to give you another chance. We'll give you another chance. We'll give you another chance. Let's see if we get these minds melted, okay? Yep. Okay. Okay, your word is filmmaker. One, two, three. Movies. Actor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Good try, good try. Oh, all right, let's try Nate it. and let's try Nate and Michael. Let's see if we can get their minds to meld. Nate and Michael. Right. Michael Lewis on the bottom. Michael Lewis. Okay. All, all right. right. All right. You guys, ready? Okay. Your word is going to be paratrooper. Huh? <laughs> okay. Never mind. Maybe not that word. Maybe not that word. <laughs> okay. Ready? Your word is going to be airplane. Okay. Let's count to three. One, two. Three. Wings. Delta. <laughs> okay, what'd you say, Michael Lewis? What did you say? The Delta. Delta, what did you say, Nate? I said wings. Wings, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's another one. Ready? We'll give you another chance. Ready? One. Okay, wait, wait no, I gotta say the word first. I gotta say the word first. Okay. Your word is Thanksgiving. One, two, 
three. Turkey. Tur Yay! <laughs> Good job. Good job. Anybody would get that one. <laughs> that was really easy. <laughs> I almost said, look, look, I almost said sweet potato pie. Okay. <laughs> you lost me there. Okay. Judith and Michael, you ready? You guys ready? <laughs> yes. Your word is going to be Jamaica. Food. One. Oh, sorry. I didn't say three. <laughs> One, two, three. Reggae. Jerk chicken. <laughs> I was going to say jerk chicken, too. I want it to be strong right now. What else is there? No, there's, there's nothing else. Jerk chicken. It's his favorite. <laughs> it's like food. He will eat jerk chicken every day of the week. Every <laughs> single day. Wow. Wow. Okay, I'm going to give you guys another one. Ready? Your word is going to be, okay, your word is going to be faith. Repeat, One, repeat, uh, repeat, repeat faith. that. Faith. 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 Yeah, what comes to mind when you hear the word faith? One, two, three. God. Yes. <laughs> yes. My yes, yes. Okay, I guess that, that that encapsulates everything. God, yes. Okay, awesome job, guys. Awesome job. Um, so the next thing I wanted to ask you guys is, you know, we're going through COVID-19 right now, and a lot of people are discouraged and what have you. How do you feel about filming in this type of environment? I want to start with John Moeller. Do you feel that it's safe for us to film right now? What are your thoughts on that? That's a good question. I mean, uh Right now, I'm kind of interning, and I work with people the past summers, uh, freelance for videography companies. So I think just like a lot of jobs, I mean, I think work has to be done. I think stories have to be told. Um, so I, I think it's, to me, it's a matter of finding out what's the safest way to do it, what can put the fewest people at risk, um, because a lot of people's jobs rely on this and um, people's lives and all that. Um, granted, I mean, if it's personal projects that can wait, I would say wait, but I think if stories have to be told or people's jobs, you know, to have to put food on the table. I'd say, I think uh, yeah. that has to be done. The safest way to do it. I think there's a lot of creative ways that people are coming up with to eliminate risk. And I think they're great to be able to save lives and help many people. I think masks are a great thing like any job. But I think there's some little techniques that people have found out, um, uh, especially in small scale stuff, like wear masks, have like kind of like plexiglass in the way, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So there's some, there's some creative ways I think people are getting out to be to have safer sets for sure okay thank you what about you miss aretha what do you think about filming during this time um limited and outside as much as you can um and for me as the lord leads if he he gives me the okay then i said okay what do we need to do i had actually a script i wanted to do but it requires a lot of people so now I said, okay, what's plan B? Another script with less cast outside. And if God gives me to go ahead, yes. But I've actually already did, um, someone else had a music video that they were uh -huh. shooting and I was cast in that. And it was a small set outside, just three people. And it was quick done. Had the mask on, took them off, put them right back on. And so there's going to be ways that they're going to keep coming up with to come around, to be able to get around to it. So um, as we get more comfortable with what we can do in a COVID environment, I think we'll see an increase in the films being done as we get the procedures set. So, yeah. Okay, awesome, awesome. How do you feel about that, Mr. Uh, Michael Lewis? Yeah, I just think, you know, um, it just makes us more creative, you know, because sometimes, okay. you know, like creativity, you know, the life could try to help limit our creativity, but, you know, it just pushes us, you know, to be better, like, you know, because I know, like, first, you know, because I'm a freelance, you know, videographer, and I have all these gears lined up. And then when COVID-19 hit, it's just like, they, I couldn't get them gears no more. But it changed, you know? And to where now I'm doing more, like, like music, you know, projects, music video projects, and, and, up, and even online streaming stuff, you know? Yeah.
So it's like awesome. just really awesome. just put, <laughs> yeah. And it just that was it. Just it, I think it helps, you know, tap into our you know creative nature, you know, just to see like the aspect of life and how and, and through our perspective, you know. Yeah, good answer. Good answer. What about you, you Mr. Powers? Um, I would definitely agree with what Michael said that it just makes makes us more creative as filmmakers. Um, I actually took the opportunity to start a live stream show where I'm interviewing friends of mine who are leaders and influencers and things like that. And uh, mm -hmm. it's been a really good creative outlet. Um, mm -hmm. And then from another perspective, I am full-time self-employed and a big chunk of my clientele is churches around the country. And in this season, every church in America has had to figure out how to go digital. Um, mm. And so people like us are the only people that can really step in and help churches advance in that aspect. Mm -hmm. And so we almost have a responsibility to not stop working. Uh, that help these churches navigate this season who just don't know what to do. They're not equipped. They don't have the volunteers or the resources. Um, we have an opportunity to kind of advance the kingdom with our craft and our talents. So that's mm -hmm. what I've been doing. I've never stopped working in this season. I've actually worked way more in this season than I have any other time. Yeah, nice, 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 nice. And Michael, Michael Brown, uh, what do you think about it? What do you think about filming during this time? There's a saying that goes, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Mm -hmm. So you have to be creative, think outside the box, as at the same time, the bottom line is making money, making a living, but staying safe. Yeah. You must go home. We're, we're, right. we're, our objective is to go home at the end of the day. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Miss Judith, with the, with the with the climate, the, the way it is in the country now nowadays um you see a big rise in culture-based films um uh, what, what is your take on on those type of films i think well first of all i think all films have a have a purpose um mm. they all meet one audience or the other mm. and i'm super socially conscious i'm, I'm a social advocate i believe as christians mm. we're called to do that we're called to to call out for justice for everybody. And so I yeah. think it's a perfect time for culture change films and social. And I think we have a responsibility to tell those stories mm -hmm. and to tell them in fair mm -hmm. and balanced ways. You know, I think we have that responsibility. I think during this COVID period, we have some very unique opportunities. And as Michael Lewis said, you know, it's very important that we get creative we just did a 72 hour lockdown film festival in Jamaica, uh, digitally, wow. of course, where yeah. we, we go down and we do training. We train young filmmakers and stuff like that in Jamaica with Jamaica Youth for Christ, which is the ministry that we work with there. And uh, so we had, what, seven amateurs who entered films that they had to make locked in. They had to be in their homes or in their you know in their garden their yard whatever but they couldn't leave they couldn't bring it and it was amazing to see the creativity you know when some of them yeah. said how are we gonna do this i don't i'm, a, I'm alone i'm like well use inanimate objects and yeah. it was interesting just to see how they were able to do social films and faith films based on just three minute films while being locked down so i think there are opportunities and i think we, we cannot be the people who sit back and say, well, this is happening, what are we gonna do? We have to be yeah. the people who say, this is happening, this is what we're gonna do. Right. And find our way around it. Because awesome. at the awesome. end of the day, awesome. the word has to go forth. Yeah, good answer, good answer. And I do apologize, we have two more celebrities in the house. Uh, we have Mr. John Moeller. And we want to ask you a couple of questions. We'll make you famous for two minutes as well. <laughs> the, the first question is, um, now I know you were telling me that you actually, um, that you're still a student. So what, where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? 10 years, uh, that's a good question. I think it's one of the big questions I'm trying to figure out now, where would I start heading? <laughs> um, honestly, uh, I would say I really want to start getting some bigger picture experience. I've been able to been fortunate to be able to tell you know, short stories now in my time in college. 
And I'd love to kind of take that to a more professional setting, continue to learn. And I guess 10 years from now, if I could start to break into being able to tell my own stories in a professional setting, that'd be amazing. So that would that'd be the goal. That'd be the goal? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Mr. Reetha, do you have a question for John? Favorite comedy movie? Favorite comedy movie. Oh, that's a good one. I was going to ask you the same one, actually. I think you might be better off ask or answer that one. <laughs> um, favorite comedy. Oh. I feel like this is one of the ones I'm going to give the wrong answer to and think back like 10 minutes from now and be like, oh, that's my favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe like Happy Gilmore. It was like a Adam Sandler one. I love Adam Sandler. Uh, I love Adam Sandler, too. He's he has some good ones, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I can think of now. Maybe Lyric could give you a better answer though. Okay, awesome. Good question, Miss Aretha. Good question. Uh, Nate, do you have a question for John? You got Nate? Yeah, you I got question? one. Uh, what would you say is your biggest strength? Biggest strength uh, in film or in, in life? Either. Either. Both. Uh, biggest strength, I guess. Biggest strength would be that I'm a visual thinker. Um, that definitely carries over to anything I do uh, with film or video. Um, I kind of always try to plan out the shots in my head and put it on paper. And I think that's, that's, uh, where I am in my head. So I would say my biggest strength is I'm a visual thinker, visual learner. Good. Good question. Thank you. Good answer. Michael, what's your question for John? Michael Lewis. Uh, let me see. My question would be, um, like, because it was going to be um, the other lady question. She asked about your favorite comedy. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, okay, here, 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 here. Because um, what I would say, at, at, you know, with the vast, you know, roles within the filming or movie, because, you know, like, what role would you like to be? Like, out of all the roles. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, thanks for the question. Would you say, would you say most wannabe or most practically, you know, one day? No, yeah, one day. That one, one day, day you did all this work, you'll make it to that road. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I would love to be a, I would love to be a full length movie director one day or director of photography and take, you know, for that visual outlet. Those either one, if I, you know, I, I grind hard, I make the right connections, I meet the right people. Uh, oh. I do a good job. That would be an awesome thing to do one day. Yeah. Oh. Awesome. Miss awesome. Judith, what's your question for John? Oh my gosh, I had the question. It just went out of my head. Oh, um, John. Yeah. Um, what is what would be your passion project? If you could do any project, what is your passion? What what project would you passionately want to do? Yeah, I think so far, and the thing that I would stand by the most is that I love telling untold stories. Me too. And like the bigger these untold stories are that haven't been told, I'm like, I need to figure out how to share your story and connect with you and learn more about you. Yeah. So I'd say that's like the, uh, the premise of most of the things I've done so far. Um, I worked with someone that, um, this, for this project, for this film festival, worked with someone that was captured in Iraq and he was a priest in Iraq and you know, he, he nearly died in imprisonment and was finally released and told a story of torture and resilience. Yeah. So that was an incredible story that hasn't been broadcast very loudly. So to be able to kind of, you know, interview him and learn about his story, for example, those are my passion projects, absolutely. Thanks for your question. Great, great question. Michael Brown, what is your question for John? John, yeah. so you've created a film. In this case, it's a feature film, right? You're in the room where it's being screened. What are, what, what, what's going through your mind as, uh, as the movie is being, film is being screened? You're there. And the room, you have a full full room, theater full of people. What are your thoughts? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, good question. I would definitely say, I mean, I've only done small things. Like I did things for like my school, like local presentation, stuff like that of, of my work so far. But I've always tried to make sure, like I can't help but look around and make sure people are engaged. If people are engaged, I think I'm doing a good job. Um, the more people that are on their phones can't help themselves. I'm like, oh, I, didn't make engaging enough, but the more people that are focused, <laughs> right. um, I would say I, that, that's kind of the sign that I'm what I'm looking for. Hopefully, um, people like it and and are laughing at the little jokes or you know engaged at the emotional moments. So that that's all I would look for. 
Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Mr. John, for your time. Thank you, sir. All right, we got another celebrity. We got Mr. Michael Lewis. Woo -woo. Hey, Michael. <laughs> My question for you is, how did you come up with the name for your production company? Um, <laughs> really, I guess um, I was really inspired, like, you know, with Spike Lee and Tyler Perry. Perry. So I was like, you know, I just Mike Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> And that's that's kind of like nice, my nice inspiration with naming. You know? Yeah, you want to keep your name in it. That's good. Very good. Very good. Yeah. All right, Miss Judith, what's your question for Michael? So my question would be: It's the same question that I just asked John. What would be your passion project? If you could do any project, any project at all, what would be your passion project? Uh, I mean, my passion projects would be more like um. Like, I know it's, it's more like, like, I have a series of things, but it's more like, you know, community building, you know, and like, it's hard. And, and it's like, I, I seen so, so many stuff. So I like, you know, just want to direct all that towards like, you know, when it comes with, com you know, what it takes to build a, you know, a community, you know, and I think that's more like my passion projects, you know, so. Nice, good answer, good answer. Michael Brown, what's your question for Michael Lewis? My question is, um, how many film projects have you completed? Yeah. <laughs> film that I wrote or other people wrote? <laughs> Completion, how many you've worked on of your own, let's say your own, your own stuff. Okay. I would say maybe one, <laughs> which is bad. No, no, hey, no. it starts with one. Yeah. I yeah. started with one, okay? And right now we have seven films. Thank you very much. Seven films and yeah. five, was it five or four or five award? Uh, five, what's that? How many fingers? I can't count. Eight. Eight, eight, eight. films. Eight films. And mm. most of them are award-winning films. Yeah. So you gotta start somewhere. Start start at the bottom and work your way up, bro. It's just up from there. Yeah. Yeah. Good no, words. Add, let me add something. Let me Do add it. one one more thing. Um, I did not go to school to do what I do. Mm -hmm. God put a gift in me, and if I didn't run with that gift, the gift would have been taken away from me. Mm. So I ran with the gift, and. It's all to the glory of God. We, we see the fruits of it. Amen. Amen. Good words of inspiration. Thank you, Michael. Nate, what's your question for Michael? Um, so I, I knew you said you do a lot of music video uh, content, which we'll have to get linked up because I do a lot of music industry work as well. Um, and I'm only, I'm only like an hour and a half from Atlanta area. So we're not that far from each other. Um, <laughs> But what is your favorite uh, music genre to create video for? Um, that's really a good question. Cause like, um, I mean, cause really, I think I like more of like, like the, cause right now I, I did like stuff that I really, really like with more gospel, but I'm venturing more towards the contemporary side, you know? And I know like, really like do a lot of inspired for that but i like how i did with the gospel side you know some of the music videos that i worked with and i done you know even though i do a lot of like you know chh videos <laughs> i mean a ton of those but <laughs> awesome 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 and uh <clears throat> john what's your question for michael yeah. So, uh, so yeah, you do a lot of video work. So you're kind of directing beginning to end kind of stuff, right? You're often yep. doing the planning, the video, and the editing. One man. <laughs> One man band. Yeah, love it. So, with all those skills, what do you think is your favorite role to play uh, when you're in a project? Shoot. Uh, believe it or not, it'd be the director. <laughs> 
because, you know, from of course, you know, you want to be the DP and carrying all the, you know, as 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 the gigs get bigger, the rig get bigger. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> it's like, you know, you could be on set and it's like, okay, I see why these folks be having their, their monitors now, <laughs> you know, versus just, you know, being holding the camera, but like definitely like, you know, the director. Awesome, awesome. Miss Aretha, what's your question for Michael? My question is, what would be your ideal location to shoot uh, a video? If you could pick anywhere in the world, where would you Man. like to shoot a video? <laughs> hey, that is a great, cause, cause like, like, of course, like, I don't know why, but like, I'm inspired like through like ancient history stuff. Like so, of course, I'm thinking like like maybe Egypt or even uh, cool. um, Mexico, like no or, no no South America, like um, in Brazil or something like that, where you see like the the ancient cultures, you know, like from those buildings, you know. So I'm thinking like I know I listed those type of locations, but I just think like you know shooting like at a them old them pyramids. You know, it doesn't matter if it's the Egyptian style or the Aztecs. You know, it's just I think it'd be really dope. So out in the jungle. Yeah, just let me know. Well, thank you, Michael Lewis. We appreciate you. And last but certainly not least, we have the phenomenal actress Miss Aretha is in the house with us. Um, John, what's your question for Miss Aretha? Oh. Um... Hmm. What is your favorite role you've uh, acted in? Favorite role? Um, ooh. Oh, um, actually, I was on a episode of The Shy, which came on, which was kind of cool. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, um, where I was actually in right next to, we were a director's pick, so we were right next to the main cast. And it was just an amazing experience to have family from Mississippi, Michigan, everybody, because I didn't realize they watched the show because I don't even watch the show. But for the half of them, I saw you. That's the first time I saw someone I knew. <laughs> so it's, just, it's, it's interesting how TV or a film reaches people and you have yeah. no clue that, you know, they even watch some of the shows until they notice you in it. So that was an amazing experience just to Great. have them follow up with me about that. Awesome, awesome. Michael Lewis, what's your question for Ms. Rita? Uh, so, so let me see. So let's just say, uh, what would be the, uh, the genre that you really feel that you really want to be in when it comes to acting? Like oh, uh, faith-based films. I, that's my passion. So yeah, that's that's. I love to um, inspire, and I love to watch films that inspire. So yeah, it would be anything that has an awesome. uplifting message. Okay, so what about like 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 face based drama? <laughs> I would say horror. <laughs> I don't know why, but <laughs> no. no I, I, <laughs> look, look. When you think about revelations, <laughs> yeah. Pretty horrifying. <laughs> true, true. That's important. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty scary. <laughs> I don't know. But... Uh, if it, well, you know what? I, actually, down the road, I have a script for a faith-based one. It's more action in the sense that you're dealing with um, uh, demons, but not demons that look like demons, but demon spirits in people. So the confrontation in that. So I like to um, see or be in something where you see the active armor, so to speak, on the person in workplace situations or wherever, where you know that they realize what they're dealing with, even though, you know, to the natural eye, it just looked like a person being mean, but you know why they're being mean, what the root of it is. So to see people address that in film would be kind of cool because it would give them an idea um, inspire them to realize what they should be doing outside of, you know, uh, film, because this is real. It, we demons are real. Angels are real. And to kind of bring that message out more would be cool to see. Cool. Awesome. 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 And, you know, 
Left Behind was wasn't a horror movie, but it was kind of scary. Left Behind <laughs> was kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> so Nate, what's your question for Miss Aretha? Yeah, this is uh, our last one. Do you have a Do you have a scripture that kind of serves it as like foundational for both your life and your career? Uh, good question. Very good. Second Timothy. Um, one and seven, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And my whole um, life and everything God has given me surrounds courage over fear. So that's that's um, the ministry work. That's the, the filmmaking process is courage over fear because I didn't plan on doing it, but God said, I want you to do it. And by faith, I said, okay. So courage over fear. So yeah, <laughs> Second Timothy, that's my thing, one and seven. Awesome, awesome, beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us for our networking breakfast. We're going to actually send out, uh, email out the contact information for everybody that was on the breakfast this morning so we can all connect with each other and stay in touch with each other and we can continue to use our gifts to uplift the kingdom. Ms. Judith, if you have something to say. Yeah, again. I do want to say something. I want to thank Stephanie for a great job. Great job. I think this was wonderful. Um, I think we have, and I do, I, I do have another meeting in just a few minutes, but I did want to pull this group of filmmakers to ask a very important question. So this is our fifth year. It's the first year we've had to go virtual. And um, there are pros and there are cons, and I'm trying to just pull filmmakers on an idea that we have. We have the idea of keeping the actual film watching portion of the festival virtual because it gives you and everybody, regardless of where you are, an opportunity for people to watch your films. Uh, so right. we're thinking of doing that because it has turned out to be, once we got past all the glitches, <laughs> turned out to be a really good idea. But we're also thinking that because we so miss the camaraderie and it was such a huge part of the festival, that what we would do is we would have the filmmakers weekend. So filmmakers who still want to come could come and we could still get together even though the festival itself so to speak would be online your thoughts real quickly i have two minutes to get off this call <laughs> well I, I i personally like the idea because you're still giving us an opportunity to get together and network as long as you're not taking that experience away i'm all for having the films virtual and then having the in-person networking and getting together um you know i'm all for that any other thoughts just jump in unmute yourself and jump in. um i would say that it sort of depends on the filmmaker so for me we had to we had to discuss with our team if if we were okay with um our film being put out right. not put out but being available Digital, sort of yeah. on demand um mm -hmm. because you sort of lose the initial in a sense you lose the first of all the initial like in-person screening right. and and that as a filmmaker to me that's a really special feeling to be in a room yes. with people watching your film and you see in real time the reactions um and then the other thing i would say is just uh it it almost kind of feels like you almost lose the like exclusivity of that experience or the the privacy of it because for a lot of us for for some of us uh filmmakers we're just like we just want whoever to see right. it on the other hand for like my team we're looking at like distribution and potentially right. doing this on streaming um and so we have to be careful about what avenues it's available on and I don't know if I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense. No, it does because that is, like that, weird that, is, that is exactly the reason why three of our films are not with us because they got distribution. So what we're thinking of is a hybrid where, you know, you as a filmmaker, filmmakers would still come, could still come and we would screen your films there. If you are there, your film would be screened there. Gotcha. for people to see. So you real time, you would still have that real time interaction, all of that. Um, right. For filmmakers, just like this time, if you don't want your film on the digital platform, clearly we wouldn't put it there because we wouldn't have your permission, which is why you had to sign that permission form. But it would then give the filmmakers who can't come and who don't mind having everybody see their film on a digital platform an opportunity to do that. So we're looking at a hybrid. 
So what would show at the actual physical event would be the films of the people who are coming to the event. So you would still get an opportunity to... to yeah, I would say if you have a balance of both of those aspects, I think that can work. Okay. All right, I hate, I hate to go, but I do have another meeting. Um, so thank you very, 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 very much on behalf of the festival, Michael and myself and the whole team. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. We enjoyed it. Next year in person, keep sending your films and look out for the GIF Festival, by the way, Jamaica International Faith Film Festival. That's another of our festivals. I'm going to be sending out a promo code. And if you were accepted into Inspired Faith Film Festival, you're automatically accepted into that festival. It's an automatic awesome. acceptance because we, we've seen your film and we bring these films all around Jamaica. We show them, they, your films go and where they make huge differences. And that's what we are all about, is taking faith films to people everywhere we can. So you'll all get an email on that with a promo code to give you a discount. It's like $25 to, to submit. So it's not a huge discount because it's not a lot of money anyway. But to help now, us. Is that festival in 2021 or 2020? 2021, in March of 2021 in Jamaica. And it also gives us an opportunity to continue to train Christian filmmakers in Jamaica so we can get more Christian films in a language that Jamaicans understand and with our own cultures and our own seeing our own selves on, on film. So thank you all very, very much. This was wonderful. We'll enjoy the rest and join us. Remember to join us on Sunday on Facebook at five o'clock for the award show. Will do. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Have, Bye, uh, everyone. Uh, Bye, everybody. Be blessed. I have a bit of uh, um, uh, a testimony, in other words. Uh -huh. um, when we screened a film in Jamaica some years ago. Um, I'll be right back. Okay. It was in a, let's call it a seedy neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, and... It was in a seedy neighborhood. The body, let me go cut to the, cut to the chase. Um, at the end of the film, I saw the, one of the main characters had a bunch of young men around him in prayer. I looked over in another corner, another representative from some Youth of Christ was there, a, a young lady with a bunch of young ladies uh, in huddled in prayer. That is what it's all about, bringing lives into the kingdom, bringing souls into the kingdom. And when you can, when you can see that, it really touches you, means that your work is going forth. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all. Thank Have you a great so day. You too. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.